Welcome, my beautiful people, to another episode of Dino Basics, where we dig up the basics on some of our favorite deceased beasts. My name is Logan, and today, we look into the basics of the confounding Karakar member. Thank you to Matthew Hole 6878 for today's topic, the Concavenator. The first remains of Concavenator would be discovered in 2003 by a team of Spanish paleontologists, including Jose Luis Sanz, Francisco Ortega, and Fernando Escaso. These fossils were located in the modern-day country of Spain, specifically a fossil site called the Las Ollas Formation, just east of the capital city of Madrid. The recovery of this original fossil would take a painstaking seven years, but the results were more than worth it. The fossil was remarkably complete and well-preserved, with even impressions of the body scale still present on surrounding rock. These remains would be taken back to the Universidad Nacional de Educación a Distancia, located in Madrid, for further study, and in 2010, a description for the creature would be published to the Nature Journal, defining this creature as a new genus and species called Concavenator corcovatus. So, <clears throat> we'll get to that. The genus name of Concavenator stems from Greek, specifically the words conca, translating to cuenca, and venator, translating to hunter, directly translating to cuenca hunter. With the addition of its species name, Corgovatus, the entire name roughly translates to the Hunchback Hunter of Cuenca. The Hunchback and Hunter part are pretty obvious based on its appearance, but the inclusion of Cuenca references where the creature was discovered, in central Spain, near the city of Cuenca. Concavenator was- I SAID we get to that! DON'T RUSH ME! was a Cerician theropod, and specifically belonged to a family of dinosaurs called the Caracaradontosauridae. This group of carnivorous dinosaurs lived throughout the early and middle Cretaceous, and had members on almost every continent, with some including the North American Acrocanthosaurus, and the Asian Xiaoji Long. However, this family is most famous for containing some of the largest terrestrial carnivores to ever walk the Earth. Members like the Giganotosaurus and Caracardontosaurus would rival Tyrannosaurus rex and even Spinosaurus in size, wielding powerful jaws and shark-like teeth to make them worthy rivals. Regarding Concavenator itself, depending on the cladogram you reference, it was possibly the smallest member of the Caracardontosaurids, but was still a modestly sized carnivore among dinosaurs. Concavenator would have measured between 16 to 20 feet, or 5 to 6 meters in length, and stood about 6 feet or 2 meters tall. Based on these estimates, it most likely would have weighed approximately 800 pounds, or about 350 kilograms. Alright. No more beating around the bush. Let's talk about the crest. The most striking and bizarre feature of this animal was certainly its short bump right above its hind limbs. This bump consists of only two extremely extended vertebrae, but as for what it was or what its purpose was, still remains a mystery. It couldn't have been a full sail, as dinosaurs who sport such features, like Spinosaurus, had their vertebrae gradually ascend into this height, and gradually descend upon reaching the highest spine, while the vertebrae of Concavenator suddenly extend for two vertebrae before returning to their original heights. Meaning that Concavenator, if it did have a sail-like structure, would be nowhere near as long as many Spinosaur sails. Similarly, it couldn't have been a hump like other Caracardontosaurids like Acrocanthosaurus, once again due to a lack of gradual increase. So, the structure seems wholly unique to Concavenator, raising the question, why would it have it in the first place? Possible answers range from a tool for thermoregulation, to a structure for display, 
or even a location to store excess fat. However, with only one specimen of concavenator discovered, and a lack of similar structures in relatives, determining a satisfying answer is difficult, and for now, must remain a mystery. The skull of concavenator was proportionally quite large, sporting powerful jaws lined with vicious teeth. Like many caracardontosaurids, the teeth of this creature were very similar to that of modern sharks, edged with knife-like serrations along the entire tooth. These serrations were ideal for cutting into flesh and easily slicing chunks off of larger prey. Their body would have been fairly sleek, ending in a thin tail to aid in mobility. The hind limbs, besides the weird fin thing towards the top, would be fairly slender and help this creature chase down prey. The forelimbs were fairly well developed and ended in three fingers equipped with powerful claws. More significantly, these forelimbs sported another peculiar characteristic of this dinosaur. Along the second arm bone, or ulna, was a series of raised bumps, reminiscent of quill knobs found on other dinosaurs, indicating that, at least on their arms, Concavenator had feathers. Now, feathers are certainly nothing new for dinosaurs, in fact, they've been noted on a wide variety of creatures, ranging from small carnivores like the Cynoceropteryx to massive herbivores like the Dinochirus. What makes this so odd for Concavenator was the family it belonged to. Almost all dinosaurs with identified feathers belong to a grouping of dinosaurs called the Coelurosauria, a grouping of theropod dinosaurs defined for being closer related to birds than later carnosaurs, such as Allosaurus and the aforementioned Caracardontosaurids. This characteristic, then, made sense, as developing feathers would be an obvious early stage towards eventual modern birds. However, Concavenator seems to point to the idea that feathers were not exclusive to coelurosaurs, and instead could be a more widely adapted trait among the entire dinosaur grouping. It is important to note that some scientists argue against these bump-like structures being for feathers, instead believing them to be quill-like structures seen in dinosaurs like Cetacosaurus. These quills, rather than being proto-feathers, are believed to be highly modified scales, serving a different purpose than the down-like material found on many coelurosaurs. Whichever the case, this confusion shows there is still much more to learn regarding dinosaurs and their relation to feathers. Concavenator would have lived during the early Cretaceous, almost 125 million years ago. It would have lived throughout modern-day Iberia, particularly areas of central Spain. During this time, Europe was a fairly tropical environment, comprised of dozens of small islands, surrounded by wide, shallow seas. Few other dinosaur species have been identified in the same rock formation as Concavenator, but based on where it lived, it most likely would have been one of the largest terrestrial carnivores of its time. Most likely competing with Spinosaurus, like the Valley Bonaventrix and the Camarillosaurus. It most likely would have hunted small to medium-sized dinosaurs, such as the Iguanodon relative, Mantellisaurus, or the medium-sized sauropod, Demandosaurus. Concavenator is certainly an eye-catching beast, but due to its relatively recent discovery in the grand history of paleontology, as well as it being... Uh, almost too weird. Like, I'm sorry, you expect this to appear on a Jurassic World poster? The appearances of Concavenator have been fairly limited, the Jurassic Park franchise has actually featured this creature, although only in smaller projects, like 2015's video game Jurassic World The Game, and 2018 video game Jurassic World Alive. Concavenator has also influenced the world of Pokemon, although unofficially, as seemingly the visual inspiration for the Frigibax evolution line. 
probably its largest role would come from 2022's video game Path of Titans, a game often known for featuring the more obscure and atypical dinosaurs over the safer fan favorites, giving Concavenator the opportunity to shine as a lethal, medium-sized carnivore. Dinosaurs are no strangers to developing outlandish styles, but Concavenator may stand apart as one of the most extraordinary. However, discounting the brutality of this animal merely from its appearance can be a deadly mistake. Behind this perplexing physique was a fierce predator capable of inflicting serious damage on foes. Hopefully, as new specimens are unearthed, we can continue to learn about this bizarre beast. That's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a comment below what you think of Concavenator, and if you've heard of this dinosaur before the video. I try to be optimistic for all dinosaurs featured, but I genuinely consider Concavenator a diamond in the rough. I could see this creature explode in popularity. Next week, we'll be looking into another underdog as we analyze the stegosaur, Chung Kingosaurus. Thank you for your support, and see you in the next video.